Hello and welcome back to Tales of Lumen. Today we're talking about the Hearthstone World Championship and I'm going to hopefully be giving you some information that'll make your viewing of the event more fun, more exciting, more enjoyable overall, just because if you're armed with at least a bit of knowledge, you'll have a bit more understanding and that will just mean good things. Right? Right. Right, I think so. So, the event itself is starting on the 2nd and 3rd of November. That's... A little weird because you expect all of the big stuff to be happening at BlizzCon itself, but no. The excitement starts a week before with the group stages, and everyone that's in the top 16, I'm going to be talking about the groups themselves in just a second, they're already in the money, so it's been worth it for them already, and it's a significant chunk of money, but every single win they get brings them a little bit closer to the $100,000 first place. That said, Let's talk about the 250,000 US dollar prize pool. That's a lot of coin. Seriously. For playing Hearthstone, I like it. I mean, it's not just playing Hearthstone. There's so much that goes into this. The amount of research some of these players do before their matches, before picking the decks that they bring into the tournaments and all the rest is just staggering. You wouldn't believe how much goes into it. These guys, it's madness. I struggle to comprehend some of the <sighs> the craziness they have to put themselves through to be able to play at the level that they play at, but, but it's all going to be worth it. I'll tell you that right now, because from 9th to 16th places, the players that land in those positions are getting $5,000 each. 5th to 8th, they're getting $7,500. 3rd and 4th places, 15,000, and you can see that it's going to get significantly bigger from here on out. 2nd place gets $50,000, and 1st place gets $100,000. It's massive. It's huge. So, the championship itself is starting on November the 2nd, and it's also going on till November the 3rd with the group stages, and then a week later... At BlizzCon 2014, the quarterfinals are happening and the semifinals and the finals are happening on the last day of BlizzCon. So those are going to be the ones that you definitely don't want to miss. If you perhaps can't watch all the games, try and make some time to check the finals out because it's obviously going to be super enjoyable. The format of the tournament is going to be best of five all the way through, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's a good thing because that means that players will bring three decks instead of five or seven or nine and i like that because it allows players to bring some personality to their game you might actually see more variation because all the classes are in much better places now than they were at the last big tournament the one that artosis won at blizzcon last year that was also kind of kind of fun to watch but best of five three decks per player I like it. I think it's just absolutely amazing. Now, all of these are going to be streamed. So, the November 2nd and 3rd games, that's the group stage games, they are going to be streamed on the official Hearthstone Twitch TV channel, which you can find linked below. I'll put all the stuff that I'm talking about below and a lot more that I probably won't even mention in this video that you can just check out, that you can browse through at your own leisure before this event starts up, before the action gets underway. It's probably worth it, but all of it's going to be on the Twitch TV channel, and a lot of it will also be shoutcasted by a whole lot of big names. Artosis, Frodan, Azale, I think. I think he's a World of Warcraft shoutcaster, not quite sure. Reels and Ben Brode himself are going to be shoutcasting the games on November 2nd and 3rd. And those are going to be happening at the ESL Burbank Studios. This is just a little taste of things to come, so you can maybe make up your mind about your favorite players, get a feel for the format and all the rest. But those are really some really cool shoutcasters there. Personally, I'm a big fan of just having Artosis and Frodan there. Those two together, they work well. Frodan has kind of become the face of Hearthstone for a lot of people, and that's well, well deserved because he's doing amazingly well at keeping all these events together and running as intended. Then, the BlizzCon games, they are going to be cast by Nimsh, Frodan, Amaz, Reels, and that's admirable. Those are some big names, and those are some 
really good players. I'm glad that they got the good players in there as well, along with Frodan, who is a good player and a good talker. So he can keep things moving on and they can keep analyzing things really well. Nimsh is one of my personal favorites. I always enjoy his shoutcasting. Amaz is just super fun and funny. Reels has the, well, insight into what's going on behind the scenes, being a Blizzard employee and all that. I haven't watched much of That's Admirable, but I know he also knows his stuff quite well. So the shoutcasting, definitely in capable hands. That said, let's talk about the groups of players. Now, as I mentioned before, there are four groups, and in these groups, there are players from the Americas, from Europe, from China, from Taiwan, and from Korea. And some of these players you may not know, but some of the unknown players played so well at the qualifying events that they are, let's just say, highly favored going on to the November 2nd and 3rd group stages and the playoffs at BlizzCon. It's pretty impressive how well some of them played, and these guys came out of nowhere. But that's what qualifiers are there for. Now, Group A has D2, Number Guy, Tiddler Celestial, and Tom60229. Group B has Tere, Kaur, Nicholas, and Renny Hour. Group C has Firebat, Green Sheep, Kuro, and Kranich. And Group D has Strife Crow, Kalento, Run and Gun, and Frozen Ice. So, the names that I knew before watching the regional qualifiers were pretty much Firebat, Kalento, and Strife Crow. That's it. The rest of them were unknown to me. I watched them play, and most of them, I gotta say, impressed me thoroughly. So I do think that we're gonna be shocked and amazed by the performance of some of these people, and although it's pretty certain that Colento and maybe Strife Crow are the favorites going into this, and they just so happen to be in the same group, in Group D. I think that it's anyone's game. I mean, at this point, they still have a lot of time to prepare with their decks. They have a lot of time to practice, to research their opponent's playstyles, and so on and so forth. And all of that will come into play. As I said before, these guys put so much into this that... The one who puts the most in, the most hard work in, the most practice in, and all that other good stuff might just come out on top and it might be someone that no one expected. So, it's exciting. Okay, it's really and truly exciting. That's 16 players. All of them are going to be playing on November the 2nd and 3rd, but only 8 of them, that's 2 from each group, will be making it through to play at BlizzCon. I'm pretty sure the rest of them will be invited regardless so that they can come and they can enjoy the festivities and all that, but only eight of them are making it through. Then the quarterfinals will be played on the first day of BlizzCon. That's the 7th of November. It's a Friday. The semifinals and the finals will be played on November the 8th, and I honestly just can't wait. I think it's going to be so, so good. Everything about Hearthstone Esports has just improved so much and gotten so much more exciting over the past couple of months that this really is going to be something special. So, if you guys have some time on those days, please check it out. I'm going to be watching as much of this event as I can. The November 2nd and 3rd stream is already going to be so exciting. I mean, these groups are stacked. You don't want to miss it. So, below I want you to tell me who your favorite player is, which group you think is most difficult, which classes you think will be most represented, and which will be least represented. You can let me know what you think of the massive prize pool, what you think of the structure, maybe the shoutcasters, and if you want more Hearthstone goodness, if you want more Hearthstone World Championship news and information, if you want more Road to BlizzCon, then you can just check the description below the video for a whole lot of links. There'll be some interviews down there. On the Play Hearthstone YouTube channel, they've got interviews going up with all the different players from the Americas, from Europe, from all over. It's kind of good. There's also a recap of the European qualifiers. Incredibly well put together video. Blizzard are doing such a great job at promoting the Hearthstone World Championship. That, it once again, just makes everything a whole lot more exciting. So I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about the lot of it, and you can just check back here soon for more. Give it a like, share it, and do all that other good stuff. Most importantly, though, happy BlizzCon 2014 and happy Hearthstone World Championships. Happy that.